It's us again. That's right. Bills by the numbers where we let the stats tell you where the Bills are at. We're presented by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Coming up as the Bills hit the bye, what are the merits of adding Odell Beckham as a possible free agent signing for the second half of the season? Is he a help or an injury risk? We discuss. What have we learned about this edition of the Bills through the first six weeks? And what does it mean going forward? And our one burning question asks, when will Tredavious White suit up? Let's get going already! Glad you can be here with us on Bills by the Numbers. Bills Wall of Famer Steve Tasker, Bills insider Chris Brown with you. And as the team gets a well-deserved week off, we take a look at a potential addition to the roster via free agency that's been talked about pretty much since the start of the season. He wasn't healthy then, but he's close to being healthy now, according to reports. Odell Beckham Jr. has been reportedly checking out teams the last few weeks. He's expected to be available as a hired gun First, Steve, after two ACL knee surgeries to the same knee, is he still a player that can make an impact? You don't sign him if he's not, that's for sure. And you got to get a chance to go out and work him out. You'll have him in for a visit and all of that. But this just in, if you hire good players, you get better. Mm. And Odell Beckham is a really good player. When he's 100% healthy, the guy can really go. He's a fast receiver, great route runner, and he catches the ball extremely well. He's a problem for defenses. So... When you get good players, you play better, and good players help you win. And, and if he's healthy and 100%, there's no question whatever team he goes to, he'll have the capacity to help him. The other, the other concern is, does he upset the apple cart in the wide receiver room or in the locker room? Um, I know a lot of people have a pre- preconceived notion about the kind of guy he is, but the acid test for me is and always will be the guys he has played with have never squawked about the kind of teammate he is. Mm-hmm. I don't think I would be concerned about throwing a wrench into a into the works in the Bills locker room. Baker Mayfield might be the only guy that he had an issue with, and he might not be that the first be, person that Baker Mayfield had an issue at with. This par- at this point, that may be a, a strike in his favor, Yeah, in Odell Beckham's favor. Uh, right? Uh, it's possible. I'm not going to pretend to know Baker Mayfield either, but, yeah, I, I – you know what I mean? That they, I mean, that was kind of how it all fell apart there because him and Baker Mayfield did not see and eye now to it's eye. Robbie. Now Robbie Anderson wants out of Carolina. Yeah. He's out. Um, it, it, the arrow's really not pointing at OBJ right now. Yeah, the, right. For me, the injury history is a concern here. This is his second ACL tear to the same knee in which he had the first. He's missed 11 games over the last two years. He is a dynamic player. There's no question about that. Here are the positives for me. Okay, He assimilates into the Rams offense last year, around this time, pretty quickly, 48 receptions, seven touchdowns after signing with L.A., including nine catches for 113 yards in the NFC title game. Having done it there gives me some confidence he could do it here, even though the scheme is different. But number one will be, is he healthy enough to capably contribute, or will he need to be nursed through this first month that he's on a roster? So now you're talking about him not helping you until middle of December? Second, with such a short period of time, will the Bills be able to maximize what he does on the field? And two other, with two other proven weapons, at the top of the receiving core pecking order, in Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis. This isn't Emmanuel Sanders at the end of his career. Right. You know what I mean? This is a guy that still has at least one or two more prime years left at age 29, again, given the interest, injury history. So if the Bills are interested, they have about $3.5 million in cap space and a very productive passing game already. I'm not sure they would be interested. Maybe they are. Who do you believe could be the most serious competition to acquire Beckham services that will be competing with the Bills, you think? The Chiefs, Baltimore, Vegas, if they can get off off the mat, there's still a lot of football to be played. And probably the Rams, right? And the Rams, yeah. And certainly the Rams. Uh, I think if there is, I'm talking about the AFC, if the NFC could be the 49ers as well. Um, oh, you think he's going to go play with Garoppolo? I can't see that. In a running offense? Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. but I would say this, 
He doesn't need the money. I think the money at this point up for a half a season prorated for a one year deal kind of thing. Yeah. He's not going for the money. He's going for the chance to win a, a ring. Yeah, I mean, the Rams, to me, are the obvious one here because of the past relationship. He knows he fits the system. And right now, Allen Robinson is a bust as an acquisition over there. So he could slide right into that role next to Cooper Cup right. and, and make that work. Yeah, I, They you know, have 4.8 in cap space, Steve, and they gave him four and a quarter million last year and got the deal done. The, the Kansas City Chiefs just converted all of Travis Kelsey's salary to bonus. To clear up three and three and three and a half, three point four, three point five. They only had five hundred k in cap space. They right. need they had room to do something just to operate right. on a daily basis. So you they have a couple injuries. You need to sign somebody. You need more than a half a million dollars. Right. So they they did that, and I get it. They so good for them. But you know there are teams out there willing to make some moves. Um, what do you yeah. think about what do you think about Green Bay? They have a passing game that is leaning heavily on young players. It's going nowhere. Do you think he would even entertain Green Bay? He goes there. He's the top dog. Yeah. There is no pecking order. It starts with him. I don't know that I look at Green Bay right now, if I'm Odell Beckham, and think those guys can bounce back and get all the way through the NFC playoffs. Mm. Maybe the playoffs, yeah. But they got to get. Is they the got to catch the Vikings. Beat the Vikings. Yeah, the Vikings are okay. Beat the beat the beat the one. Niners. Beat the Rams. Um, the South looks, you know, the Bucks look, you know, a little defunct right now, and the NFC East with all of those teams with the Eagles, Cowboys. Um, I don't know that if I'm Odell Beckham, I'm saying I'm the difference maker for the Packers that puts them ahead of all those teams. Yeah, I mean, you, know you what could, I mean, he, I mean, I guess on a. If now, you wanted money to talks. look at it, if you wanted to look at it, they have six point one in cap space. If you want to look at it favorably up from a Green Bay perspective, you the sell job to Odell is you want to be Devontae Adams in this offense because that's what you that's could right. be here. That's how you sell Odell Beckham and on Green Odell, Bay. And let's face it, for Odell selfishly, and everybody's this way at some point. If this is going to be a one year deal, he wants to showcase. So that may be the exact landing spot. But for I him. would, but I would say this too. If he's not interested in it, because then after after this season, if he doesn't win a championship, he's he can pick his spot then after yeah. showcasing himself in a with Aaron Rodgers. In I think Green he's Bay. trying to pick his spot now too, though, to some extent. I think so. The too. Chiefs you mentioned, I think that's interesting. Uh, he zooms to the top of the receiver depth chart there, in my estimation. I mean, he's better than Juju Smith-Schuster. He's better than Valdez Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Yeah. He's better than McCole Hardman. So that could be attractive, and you're playing with Patrick Mahomes, one of the two best quarterbacks in the league. Andy Reid's a creative offensive mind. He'll get Tampa Bay targets. was mentioned a couple of times. They're healthy now, though. It's Mike Evans. It's Chris Godwin. I mean, what are you, the two or the three there? I know it's Brady, but... I, I just don't see that one. They have about six million in cap space too. To me, I I don't know. Well, of course we me, don't know what he's thinking. Right. Like, and for me, I if I'm Odell OBJ, I'm getting ready, getting as ready as I can get, and I'm just biding my time. There's no reason to make a a move until you get more information on how good Tampa Bay is going to be, how good San Francisco is going to be, how good Green, Green Bay is going to be. Green Bay is a back. train wreck right now. Right. All these teams. I mean, I, you, do you really want to parachute Tampa just in lost there? to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Do you really want to parachute into these teams right now? Let it, let it play out a little bit. Let it bit. marinate. Yeah. Let it <laughs> marinate and then pick a spot where you can have a little bit more information about who really is going to make a run at the NFC or the AFC. Okay. You already touched on what you think Beckham's motivations might be. Do you believe the Bills could afford Beckham for what he might be looking for in terms of a contract, albeit prorated, for at the most probably nine games, maybe eight, maybe even less than that? He, he signed for four and a quarter million last year. And prorated, that means what, 2.5 and a half a year? Give or take, yeah. Two point, two point something. Um, they have about three and a half in cap space. They'd have to clear up some more cap space because they still have a half a season, 10 games to go. So then the next question becomes, go. do you want to move money around right. and compromise yourself for next offseason when you've got some pretty important signings? That falls that falls at the feet of, of Terry and Kim. Do they really want to, do they want to write a check for this guy? And how, big a, how great a case would Bean be willing to make to them to say, hey, 
this guy is the guy. And he said, well, you said that about Vaughn Miller, too. You know, how many yeah. of these guys are the guy, difference maker, that you, are you going to, you know, when's the next one going to come down? So, you know, I, I and I'll say this, too. I don't really feel a burning desire to, to put a cherry on top of the cake that the Bills are right now. Yeah. Uh, I, like the, I like where they're sitting now. I think there's some guys that have more under their hood in their team now that, you know, just haven't had a chance to contribute yet. Um, I know, you know, we're waiting. It's been six, six games. But I think that's a question that the football people are going to have to answer. Do they feel like they need more on that side of the ball to put them over the top? I don't know that you do. Yeah. He's going to play I, I better than Steph Diggs did against the Chiefs? Come on. I, I don't expect Brandon Bean to be aggressive here in pursuing Odell Beckham Jr. If he wants to come play for our team, I'll listen. I'll, oh, you want to play here more than anywhere else? Okay, let's see if we can get something done. Right. But as soon as there are other teams interested, Brandon Bean doesn't have the cap space to get into a bidding war anyway. Yeah, and it starts, it starts with Ken Dorsey and Sean McDermott and Cromer and those guys saying, listen, could we use another guy like him? I mean, they all know who he is. And Ken Dorsey said, yeah, we could use him. It'd give us a chance to do this and this and this. And he's better at this than you know, like McKenzie or Shakir or Hodgins or na you name the right. guy. He's better here than the, our guys now. We could use him. And then co conveying that not only with Brandon Bean saying, okay, here's what we think on the football side. Here's where we could use him. And Brandon Bean saying, well, to us, that's probably worth about this number, about this number of dollars. We're gonna, and they'll go to Beckham and say, listen, here's, here's the deal. Here's where we're at. We'll let you – you can come sign with us, but this is going to be your role unless, you know, unless something happens. This is going to be your role. This is what we envision. You can come in here, play for the next three months, and then you can hit the free agent market after we've showcased you in this manner. That's kind of what it's going to come down to. They'll be able to fit him in because the money's not going to be that much on a half a season. Hmm. But – It's gonna be tight. Yeah, <laughs> it, I mean, it will be tight. They'll three have three and a half million. Is what they'll, they got. Yeah, but what are you gonna? You know, you give give Josh his money now and make it into bonus and throw it at him. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's it's a it's a doable prospect because of the shortened season you'll be paying him. Yeah, he's got a choice to make about where he wants to be showcased and maximize his market value after the season. He wants a chance to win a championship. That anytime that's in the conversation, the Bills are at the top of the list. Yeah. The Eagles will be at the top of the list. You know what I'm saying? So there's only a handful of teams. If if that is indeed his intent to win another one, it's a short list. Right. At this point. Now it may grow a little bit or it may change in the weeks to come because of the you know, the, you know teams fall away. We'll see. This may still pertain to a potential Odell Beckham acquisition, but what have we learned about the Bills through the first six games this season, and does it indicate a need for a player like Beckham? Um, uh, well, like I said, a need is when it's a, when it's a really difference-making player, everybody's got that need. Yeah. But the Bills are, you know, number one or number two in the number two in the league in scoring coming into this last week. Mm -hmm. They just beat the team on their own field. There's not much wrong with the Buffalo Bills as they're currently constructed. Not much at all. And there may be a little bit of this way we made her sign him so nobody else does. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder how much that's a thing with GMs around the league. You know, like. Well, we don't want them to get him. Because if you don't get him and he goes to the Chiefs, for example. Or the Jets. <clears throat> or the Dolphins or I the don't Patriots. Care if he goes to one of those, but like if he goes to the Chiefs, your your main adversary, it's knocked you out of the playoffs the last two years, is like, dude, really? Like you know what I mean? That would just yeah. tick a lot of Bills yeah. fans off. I know that. But, I mean, we've learned in my estimation, through the first six weeks, we've learned that this team has extraordinary depth already. They've been able to win games despite having the roster ravaged by injuries. The way they play, they believe they're the, one of the best teams in football. 
And as they get healthier and the new additions continue to blend in, I mean, they figure to be even more formidable in the second half of the season, That's Steve. Right. That's a scary thought. Yeah. I mean, think about this defense. It's number one in the league. It's first in points allowed. It's first in a bunch of other categories. They're, they're, they're in the top ten in sack percentage. And Tredavious White's coming back. Like, hello? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, there's a chance for these guys to be even better yeah. in the second half of the season when they're healthy. Jordan Phillips, Ed, uh, Ed Oliver, all those guys are going to be getting healthier over the next week or two. They'll get a little bit more like they were in opening night. It'll be interesting to see how Spencer Brown comes back. They need him to get healthier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's they're sitting in a nice spot now, but they got 11 weeks to play the regular season, so there's a long way to go. All right, good discussion there. Time, though, now for the numbers game, and we put Steve to the test this week with some veteran receiver acquisition trivia in the wake of the Odell Beckham Jr. discussion. So, Steve, this is Bills related, but since 2008, which free agent signee receiver was the most productive in his first season with the Bills? Can you give me a name? Who do you want to throw at me? Terrell Owens. You're going to go Terrell Owens. That would be incorrect. All right. I'll um, give you one more guess. Most productive in his first season. With the Bills oh, after Steph, being signed Diggs. as a free agent, signed as a free agent, oh. not traded. Man, I don't even know who they are. Um, Terrell was a good guess. He was third on the list, though. There's two guys ahead of him in terms of productivity in their first season in a Bills uniform. Wide receiver after being signed as a free agent. I have no idea. Hold on. A wide receiver free agent? Yeah. Um, There's been a few. Kelvin Benjamin. Not, no. You get. You can do better than that. Come on. Um, holy. It is in the McDermott era. Oh, okay. John Brown. John Brown. There you go. 2019, 72 receptions, 1,060 yards, and six touchdowns. Beasley behind him. Same year. Right. 67 catches, 778 yards, Should've six touchdowns. That, yeah. Terrell Owens thinking, was third. I was thinking way back in the day. Yeah. 55 receptions, 829 yards, and five touchdowns. All right, question two. Since 2008, how many times did the Bills trade to acquire a receiver? How many times since 2008 traded to acquire a receiver? Acquire. Three. You're close. The answer is four. 2014, they traded a six-round pick to Tampa for the wide receiver named Mike Williams. 2017, traded Ronald Darby to Philadelphia for Jordan Matthews and a third-round pick. Yeah, he was barely here. 2018, traded a seventh-round pick to Cleveland for Corey Coleman. He was here for two weeks. 2020, traded the first, fifth, sixth, and a fourth the next year for Stephon Dix. That one was gold, Jerry. Gold! Um, question number three. Since 2008, how many receivers were traded away by the Bills? Three. You're close. It's four again. <sighs> I missed it by the Did, same Can you gap. think of any off the top of your head? Sammy? Tr receivers traded away. Sammy Watkins is one. Um, traded to the Rams. Since what year? 2008. Evans? He left as a free agent. Lee Evans? That was way before that, wasn't it? What's that? Lee Evans? Lee Evans, correct. Okay. <laughs> I got buzzed. Yeah. Oh, thank there, you. There, there's the thing. Um, <laughs> there were two others that were traded. Sammy Watkins, Lee Evans. Ooh, hold on. Hmm. I don't know. Stevie Johnson traded to San Francisco the really? same year they drafted Sammy. Oh, the same okay. weekend they drafted Sammy. Oh, okay. And then they traded Zay Jones to the Raiders in oh, 2019. Zay Jones got we traded. stand corrected right. on the previous question. There was one additional uh, receiver that was acquired via trade. It was Kelvin Benjamin. So it's five since 2008, not right. four. So my bad. Mea culpa. 
Um, and your last question, Steve, how many receivers have been drafted by the Bills in the Sean McDermott era since 2017? How many receivers? Give me a number. Two this year. Hod was Hodgins drafted, right? Yeah, Hodgins. Um, Shakir. I'll say five. The answer is seven. You're God. close. You've been under the number every time. Um, so you, you mentioned Khalil Shakir. He was drafted this year, the only receiver in the draft this year. Uh, you mentioned Isaiah Hodgins, drafted in 2020, along with there were two receivers in that draft taken. Oh. 2020. Hodgins and fourth I round. I can't remember. Gabe Davis. Oh, that's of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, uh, I, I need coffee. Zay Jones in 2017. 2018, right. late in the draft, Ray Ray McLeod and mm -hmm. Austin Prohl. Ray Ray McLeod still in the league. He's in San Fran. He's a yeah. return man. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, Gabe Davis, Isaiah Hodge in 2020. And the one everyone forgets in 2021, Marquez Stevenson mm. for a total of seven. That's right. All right. We'll, wow. we'll have Steve brush up on his receiver history. Well, I, you know, it's a position I played, and I could not be less in tune with the machinations of the Bills in the that regard. <laughs> machinations of the Bills. Nice. As we contemplate what may or may not happen with Odell Beckham Jr., we thought we should at least examine how the whole thing went down last year at this time when Beckham signed with Los Angeles after forcing his release from the Browns. By all accounts, it went well, but here to take us through how Beckham and the Rams came to be is one former bill and current radio analyst out there in L.A. It's Kirk Morrison. All right, Kirk, the main reason we've got you here is first we, <laughs> we'll go back in time because, you know, this whole Odell Beckham sweepstakes thing is getting a little crazy here, especially on a bye week for the Bills. Uh, how did everything come together last year between the Rams and Beckham and then maybe just talk about that marriage and how you felt it went. Wow. It was uh, one of those situations in which the Rams were probably looking for a one more extra playmaker, right? This was more of a luxury, not more of a necessity, right? The Rams had already had Cooper Cup, who was having an outstanding season. They had a kind of a group of running backs that worked well. You had Van Jefferson. More importantly, you had Robert Woods. A lot of people in Buffalo remember Robert Woods, yep. who was drafted there as well. So you had this group of wide receivers. Everything was working. But then Odell Beckham, obviously, we knew that there was some situations that were going on in Cleveland. And you just kind of wanted to just take a look, just see what's going on. Would he be, um, you know, probably into coming and joining the team that was trying to go win a championship? Obviously, the, his relationship with Cleveland, or more so maybe the quarterback, after his dad had posted some tweets about how Odell was open and Baker Mayfield was just not finding him. So there was some situations behind that. But I think for the most part, what it was was Les Snead, the Rams general manager, being very aggressive and said, you know what, let's add one more playmaker. Let's bring one more guy in that can help our team get over the hump if needed and go and win a Super Bowl. Now, again, I caution, it was more of a luxury. It was not a necessity. Well, when they made the acquisition for Odell Beckham Jr., literally a week later or a couple of days later almost, they lose Robert Woods for the season. So now what became a, what was a luxury became a necessity. And that's how Odell Beckham really started to ingrain himself within the offense. He became the number two guy next to Cooper Cup and it took about four to five weeks before he can really grab his footing. But down the stretch, Odell Beckham Jr. was the playmaker that the Rams had needed. And you saw the way that he played in the playoffs. He gave Matthew Stafford some unbelievable uh, catches, gave him some opportunities that I think the Rams just didn't have before. And obviously, he helped him win the Super Bowl. And I, to my opinion, I really feel had he not got injured in Super Bowl 56, I truly believe he would have been Super Bowl 56 MVP and not Cooper Cup. Give me an idea of how it went in the locker room. There's always a question that when you've got a team that's really good and they're playing at a high level of bringing a guy in who might upset the apple card. The chemistry's not. That guys will be bitter that he's getting opportunities that they didn't get. And you mentioned the injury to Robert Wood. I get that. 
but what was the what was the vibe like in the locker room? And you know, and I'm sure you agree. The acid test for everybody is if a guy's a good guy, the locker room will tell you. I, I think Steve, we all know guys that we've played with, and guys who you know that you 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 gotta give them a second. You want to see it, you know what their makeup is. How do they go about their business? How do they practice? Um, a lot of times we don't necessarily know. It's kind of what we hear say. And they walk in the locker room and you say, wow, I totally didn't expect this guy to be this way. And I think it's a little bit different when it comes to the Rams, when outside players come into the organization, because no matter who you are, what you do, no matter what, you are automatically, you are not the baddest honcho in the room. The baddest dude is number 99, Aaron Donald. So you're not going to outwork him. You're not, his resume speaks for itself. He's a first ballot hall of famer when a time comes. So I think that for guys who walk into that locker room, you already know that going in and it's really about, okay, where do I fit in? What's the culture here? And I think with Odell, when he first came in, it was a situation in which he realized I got to work, but it wasn't just him. He also had Von Miller who was there as well. So you had guys who were new to the team that wanted to ingrain themselves into this culture of what Los Angeles had with Sean McVay, a new quarterback in Matthew Stafford. They still had, oh, by the way, Andrew Whitworth, their left tackle. So they had a bunch of veteran guys who all were working and moving in the same direction just to win a Super Bowl. And I think that's what helped the locker room dynamic was that you had a bunch of guys that were egoless. No one cared about what you accomplished before. It's about what you're accomplishing now. And I thought to a man, Every person you talked to about Odell Beckham Jr. as a teammate, they was there was nobody saying anything bad about Odell. Everybody loved him, and they obviously they still wish they have him right now. Currently, yeah. And you mentioned Von. Von Miller is obviously here. That's no secret. And right. he's he's been asked about Odell a few times by the Buffalo media. Not nearly as much as Coach McVay, who's seemingly asked about him every single week. Um, <laughs> right, but. Vaughn had an interesting response, and I think you know he's pretty tight with Odell, and he right. said he knows where Odell's going to wind up. He didn't elaborate any further after that, but if you had to kind of handicap this, Kirk, who's, who do you think is the odds-on favorite here? I know we don't have cap figures in terms of space sitting right. in front of us right now, and we don't know if Odell really wants big money or he just wants to win a championship. What do you think his motives are, and, and where do you think he's got the best chance of ending up? Oh, man, uh, Chris, this is a tough one because if you ask me what his motives are, he wants to win another championship, right? Okay. Like, that's that we know that for sure. He, he's not going into this to uh, just say, hey, I just want to go be on a team or I don't just going for the most amount of money. I don't think that's what he's, his plans are. I think, number one, there is, uh, for me, he look, he's looking for longevity, right? He's looking for a long-term deal. He doesn't want to be a one-year rental. He wants to find a place and hopefully spend the next two or three plus seasons and really find some secure footing. He hasn't had that over the last couple of years, right? Cleveland, he was traded there, a lot of expectations. And I think the Cleveland experience really woke him up that, hey, he went for a situation, not to when he was traded, made a lot of money, but there was no happiness behind it. Now I think Los Angeles rejuvenated him and he's got time. And I think that's what the, the all this whole thing right now with Odell, it's there is time. We're still early. We're only six weeks into the NFL season. I think things could look totally different in four more weeks, five more weeks. So he can play the waiting game. But for right now, if you're saying who are the favorites, it's obviously the teams who are out front. Obviously, Buffalo has to be one of those favorites. If you're looking for an opportunity to go win a championship, they look like the team that could be there. But we could say the same about Kansas City. Right. You can say the same right. thing about the Philadelphia Eagles, the teams who are up top or even I think the uh, Green Bay Packers as well, who are looking for a receiver and are hungry for a receiver and may pay that King's ransom possibly to have Odell Beckham Jr. Not just for this season, but for the entirety of the contract for Aaron Rodgers. So that's what I think is all in play. And for Odell, he can take his time. This isn't a rush for him. He can take his time knowing that. He's just gearing up this season for a playoff run, but then also, too, to have some infrastructure in a team and an organization that they're about winning next year and the year after that. So I think that's what all comes into play when he's making his decision. 
Good stuff, Kirk. Really appreciate you coming on with us. And, and um, I, I agree with you. There's a, there's a growing list of teams that may feel like right. Odell Beckham might be the guy to put them over the top. Thanks for joining us. Hey there, want to win a million dollars? Well, you can with FanDuel's free pick'em style game, High Low. Pick teams for four different stat categories that you think will score the highest or lowest for the week. The more you get right, the more you can win. Get them all correct, and you could take home a million dollars. Just go to FanDuel.com slash High Low to play. We play every week. Steve, you've got High Low for right. points this week. Let them rip. Here we go. I'm, I'm going to take Joe Burrow and the Bengals. They're coming off a good, really nice performance in New Orleans. I think they're going to be able to put up a lot of points against Atlanta. Um, Atlanta has struggled up until this last week when they played a little better. But they're 31st against the pass. So I think Joe Burrow and the crew is going to have a big day. For low on points, I'm going to go with your Washington Commanders. <laughs> they're one of the lowest scoring teams in football, and they'll probably be without Wentz this yeah, he's week. They've got the finger problem. They're the bottom of the league in scoring touchdowns. Yeah, Washington low on points. All right, high for passing yards. I'm taking the Chiefs. I know they're playing the 49ers' top-ranked defense, but San Fran has a ton of injuries, including Nick Bosa on the defensive side of the ball. So I think Patrick Mahomes will be able to do what he does. So KC high for passing yards. Low for passing yards. It's hard not to take the Panthers. Their offense is in turmoil. They just traded away Robbie Anderson, and they're playing a Bucks defense looking to bounce back after an embarrassing loss at Pittsburgh. So Carolina low for passing yards. All right. High for rushing yards. How about them Cowboys, the two-headed monsters? Zeke Elliott and Tony Pollard, they're going to go against the Detroit Lions who can't stop anybody. The Cowboys are going to make them pay. Mm. Low for rushing yards. I'm going to go with the, your Miami Dolphins. They're, they they're struggle to run the ball. <laughs> And they're 30th in the league, and they're facing a Steelers team that's not great, but their front's pretty good. So I'm going to go Miami for rushing, low for rushing yards. Okay, high for sacks. I'm going to take the Broncos. They can't score points, but they can get to the quarterback. They're facing the Jets, and Zach Wilson can move, but I see them having some success against the Jets O-line. Low for sacks. I'm rolling with the Browns against Baltimore. We know it's tough to get Lamar Jackson on the ground, so I can't see Cleveland having a big day with him. So Cleveland... Low for sex. Time now for our one burning question. When do we believe, Steve, Tredavious White is added to the active roster and takes the field? The easy question, of, the easy answer, of course, is after the bye against the Green Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, in my own estimation, I think it's going to be against the New York football Jets Ooh. the next week. Week nine of the regular season. You're going week nine. Yeah, October. It'll be November sixth, just under a year when he got hurt. From okay. When he got hurt. Okay. After beginning his practice with the team on October twelfth, the Bills have until November first to make a call on whether to add Tre'Davious White to the fifty-three man roster. I believe they'll do it coming out of the bye week. I think he will play against the Packers. Okay. I am not convinced he'll start, but I do believe he will play some. It wouldn't surprise me if they play him on a pitch count. Yeah. Home that's good. game. That's a good point. Play him on a pitch count, welcome back, you know, that whole thing, and then kind of ramp him up for more reps with each successive week. I think that's probably the way it goes, which gets me excited. Can't wait to see Trey back on the field. This defense, and you get to add Tredavious White? Are you kidding me? And I will say this. He may get off to a slow start, like he said, but I think he's going to come back and be exactly the player he was when he left. I don't think there's any question that with today's technologies and the way he's been working, he's going to come back and play extremely well. We have only seen him in limited – We've our exposure to him has been very limited in the practice setting. But he he's moving – I mean, the quick twitch stuff, I mean, it's it's all yeah. there. Yeah, I can't speak to how he feels. Yeah. But I've we've witnessed the work he's put in. It's, it's nothing short of super impressive. So excited – because I, I find it hard to believe he's not ready to return coming out of the bye, but we shall see. That'll do it for this edition. Be sure to subscribe on whatever podcast platform you use so you're not out of the loop. You're notified when the next episode drops. And remember, when you need to know about the Bills, you need to check Bills by the Numbers. For Steve Tasker, I'm Chris Brown. Enjoy the bye week. We'll catch up with you soon, everybody.